Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Heart Talk. Today is April 23rd in the year 2019, and I am Sue Ellen Dickinson. You already know that. But anyway, I'm going to be with you for the next hour or so. I can, we've got a lively discussion coming. I can smell it coming. Oh, boy. And uh, we've got a lot of great people on the call. I want to welcome you, and I want to welcome um, th- those that are here, I mean, and everybody listening on replay, because we are getting more and more people listening on the replay. So we're just thrilled to have you, and I uh, hope that you enjoy the program and the discussion ahead because I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty lively one. So let's just, let's get going. But before we do, let me remind you that Heart Talk is so much more than just an ordinary call. And why is that? Well, because this is where you can speak your mind straight from your heart. And that's why we call it Heart Talk. And that's exactly what we're going to do right here and right now. And Heart Talk by the way, is brought to you by, are you ready? Brought to you by the essentials. And you may be wondering, oh, what are the essentials? Maybe you haven't heard of them yet. Uh, I know a lot of you on this call have, and uh, you love them and swear by them just like I do. Well, the essentials is an amazing nutritional supplemental product that has been formulated and created by our very own Dr. Rudy Cartwright. In case you don't know who Dr. Rudy Cartwright is, he is a very well-renowned neurosurgeon. Now, that's a brain surgeon. And he also happens to be an expert in multiple sclerosis. Now, tell me, before we go any further, how much better does it get than that? To have a doctor who is not only an expert in multiple sclerosis, but a brain surgeon who understands the working of the brain, which is where all of this starts from anyway, this MS thing. Uh How much better does it get than that? Well, he has formulated these products, and uh, they are designed to help get rid of your fatigue, to help stop pain, tingling, and numbness. We all know about that. To help with vision problems and balance and to clear up, to help clear up that pesky old brain fog that I love to hate. Well, we all love to hate. Anyway, yes, um, they are made up of all natural ingredients. And yes, you can take the essentials as well as all of Dr. Cartwright's products with your current medications. So no interruption or hitting the pause button there in any way. You can take them with what you're already taking. Um, and they are amazing. I know right now, I'll just um, give you a little uh, um, uh, hint here. Um, I am symptom-free. Thank God. I take Thank these essentials God. and his other, yeah, his other products too. And I tell you what, uh, they make me feel great. Um, and like I said, I am symptom free. So what have you got to lose by giving it a try? Um, maybe a symptom or two? Wow, wouldn't that be something? And help get some of your energy back. Get your life back. Because you know what? You know what? You've heard me say this before. Your health has been stolen from you. Your health has been stolen from you by this monster multiple sclerosis. We're going to talk about that here on this, on this, pro, uh, this program. But I want to tell you about the essentials first um, because it's truly amazing. I mean, they are made, formulated, and, and offered to us by a bona fide doctor. This is his specialty, and he's an expert in, in MS. How much better does that get? So anyway, Um, I'm going to be sending you an email as soon as we're done with the program here. I'm going to be working on the replay. So you've got that link to listen to it again and share with family and friends, if you will. I know they're going to love it too. And uh, scroll down about halfway in that email, and you'll see in big capital letters, Get Dr. Cartwright Supplements. Click on that. Right in that section, you'll see the links. Click on the links, and you'll read a lot more than I've had time to tell you about right now. Also, you'll be able to see the list of ingredients. Everybody wants to know what's in them. That's great. The list is there. And, but by all means, click on that button to pick yourself up. Get yourself a bottle of these essentials because I really, I really know you're going to be glad you did. And as always, if you have any questions about any of this, give me an email. Uh, and that would be at Sue Ellen Dickinson, D-I-C-K-I-N-S-O-N, at gmail. 
www.thelifestyleshow.com. And I'll be happy to answer uh, any questions that you might have. And by the way, all, as always, if there is a, uh, a question that's uh, kind of over my pay grade, so to speak, or over my head, you know, I'll take it to Dr. Cartwright and I'll get that answered for you. So, you know, we're here to help wherever we can, however we can. Um, but I really encourage you, take a look at those essentials. Hit that button, pick yourself up a bottle, because I really know you're going to be glad you did. And like I said, what in the world have you got to lose by trying, except maybe a symptom or two, like so many of us on this call have already done. So anyway, with that, let's get started with the program, okay? Because there is a lot to talk about. This is a very deep subject. Um, And let me just start with... um, Oh, just a little reminiscing of the past, if I may, just take a, just less than a minute. Because I remember, you know, I just got finished telling you I'm symptom-free. I am, thank God. It wasn't always that way. Ho, 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 far from it. Far from it. And um, I remember there, there was a time when um, my doctors... I was really bad off. I was, by the way, for those of you who do not know or who have not read my book, which, by the way, you can pick up and find out all about at my website, nomorems.com. But um, I was really bad off. I was uh, secondary progressive stage. And, you know, you don't hear me talk very much about that here on Heart Talk. And there's a reason I get kind of choked up. I get, uh, you know, I don't like to talk. I'm one of those people I just don't like to talk about myself. I'd rather write a book about it, you know, which I've done. So you can go check that out. But sometimes it bears doing. And so it does connect here. And I'll tell you why. Um, because of what we're going to talk about. Um, when you are, and I'm speaking to everybody here, not just those who are maybe like I was secondary progressive, but to everybody. Because you don't have to be secondary progressive to feel alone in the crowd. You don't have to be on death's door as I was to feel all alone in the world. I was not all alone in the world, but I was alone in the crowd. At least it felt that way. And when these doctors, plural, doctors told me, I didn't have much longer left to live. I didn't have a lot of time left on this earth. And you know what? Funny thing. I knew they were right. You know why? I could feel it. I could feel it in my physical being. And I won't really go there right now, but just to kind of set the stage for you, because um, what we're going to talk about really hits home to me. Maybe it'll have hit home to you in ways I haven't discovered yet. But that aloneness feeling that's deep within inside your psyche, deep within inside your spirit, stirred something inside of me, even at that stage. It really did. And um, for those of you that already know my story, you know that I got angry when I heard that death sentence given me. You don't have that much longer left to live. Those were his words. They are branded in my brain. You do not have that much longer left to live, unquote. But it was a turning point. At that point, I crossed the Rubicon, so to speak. I did. My own deep waters of the Rubicon, I crossed. And you know what? The transition was amazing. I became an army of one. And I called myself that laughingly. I became an army of one. And you know the rest of the story. Because here we are today. But I know I'm addressing many of you out there when I talk like this. When we really get right down into the nitty-gritty. We get down in the trenches and we're slugging it out with this subject. Because it hits so many people. And I asked you at the start of the program uh, when we hit the record button, did you, did you get my email? A lot of people got my email. And you know what? I, I'm still getting replies. I'm still getting emails back from people. So I can tell you this is an extremely sensitive subject and one that hits people right where they live. Maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you'll never get there. 
I hope you don't. But if you are, this one's for you. Because I'm talking to you, and you know it. Now, let's get after it. What do you say? Because, I mean, right down into the nitty-gritty, right down into the core of this issue, because it seems to me that there is nothing that this guy is afraid to talk about. And so it is with this recent article that triggered all this by, guess who? Devin Garland. Who else? <laughs> because he brings us another forbidden topic. Yeah. Could you figure, <laughs> imagine yeah. that? And he brings this forbidden topic out into the light mm-hmm. of day. And um, he talks about it in just in the only way somebody like, like Devin Garland can talk about. And what's he talking about? Loneliness. <laughs> Loneliness. And I get the feeling that it was, you know, that Devin has felt alone in a crowd. I'm going to read this to you um, because it is heart stirring. I'll bet he has felt alone in a crowd. I'll bet he feels like an army of one. And there are probably many of you, I'm guessing, I'm calculating by the emails I've just received since this time yesterday in regards to this subject, who feel like an army of one. But I'm here to tell you, you're not. And Devin's going to tell you too, in his own words. And I want you to really listen to what he has to say. Because there's so much more to dealing with something like the loss and the loneliness, when you are being held captive, when you are being held prisoner, some would say, Mm -hmm. by this monster disease that we know as multiple sclerosis. So I'm going to take a sip of my juice, and then we're we're going to hear what Devin has to say. <clears throat> so, let's hear what Devin has to say. And this is called, by the way, his article is called, When You're Fighting Alone. Here's Devin. Living with a disease like multiple sclerosis can be a difficult task, particularly as you grow older. Having a good support system is crucial to living successfully with disease. Not everyone has that, though. And for some people, like me, even having a good support system doesn't mean we don't sometimes feel like we're fighting this battle alone. I talk with a lot of people with MS, and I'm often left with the thought that I have an interesting perspective as someone who's had this disease this long at this age and is single. With no family of my own and a career taken by my disease, I find I face some struggles in ways that others don't. So I'm here to share, primarily because there are others like me, and no matter how minor we are in the grand scheme of MS demographics, you need to hear that you're not alone. As I write this, I'm 41 years old. And I've had MS for close to two decades. I'm single, unable to work. I have no children, though I very much treat my dog as a child. (laughs) It could be argued that multiple sclerosis played a pretty big part in my current situation. But that's not the discussion point here. Rather, I wish to discuss the difficulties that come with all of this. There are many times during which this combination of life statuses can weigh on me. In short, it can make a lonely disease seem even more, well, lonely. It can also really make one feel like giving up and like there's nothing left worth fighting for. I feel like I constantly have to manufacture extra, extra motivation to keep on keeping on and to do the things I need to do to keep this disease at bay. I lost my career. 
there was a huge chunk of my life where I poured my heart and my soul into my education and then into my career. My career was something that defined me, and I loved it. I was one of those lucky people who had a job that wasn't a job to me. I thrived at it and genuinely enjoyed my work. And in many ways, in many ways, I'm still mourning the loss of my career. It was something I devoted a lot of time to, something I was, I was proud of. I guess without it, I have a lot less to be proud of. At least, that's how it feels. And that's not the only thing I'm missing, though. In, in what might seem like a surprise to many friends and family, I, I did always want to have a family of my own. And as I've gotten older, I certainly lament not having one. I feel like, especially what I've learned from living with this disease, that, that I'd have a lot to offer children in terms of advice. The reality these days is that I'm too old and damaged by MS to have a kid at this point. It's okay. I've accepted it. <laughs> That's life. I do often think, though, that having children of your own must be a massive source of motivation if you have MS. And when I talk to others who are struggling with disease, I often want to grab them and say, what about your kids? You need to pull it together for them. You need to go on for them. I think that a lot when someone comes to me and tells me their spouse has left them because of the disease. And that happens way more, by the way, than I care to think about. I always think, but you have kids. No matter what happens to you, you raised or you are raising these children, and that's something to be proud of. Perhaps that's just the naive musing of a single old man, though, and, oh, sure, 41 isn't old, but with nearly half of that life spent with MS, it sure feels much older to me. As I said, I have a great support system. Wonderful friends, despite losing quite a few over the years, and great parents and siblings. But that doesn't mean I don't wish I had more, though. It's hard to be motivated when you've got no children, no significant other, or even a career. That's kind of what I'm trying to say here. I find myself wondering, why am I doing all this, living like this, dealing with the pain, falling all the time, the confusion, the being uncomfortable? It's easy to ask yourself, What's the point? Honestly, I still struggle with all of that. But that doesn't mean I've given up. And you shouldn't either. There are still a tremendous amount of joys in life. You may just have to work a little harder to find them. Maybe you get a hobby. Or maybe you help other people. Or maybe you just even take pride in fighting this disease. But just because you aren't in the position that others are in doesn't make you any less important. I'm going to read that one again. Just because you aren't in the position that others are in doesn't make you any less important. Amen. Keep fighting and know you are not alone. Because I have a feeling a lot of people are in the same situation, just like us. Has anyone ever asked Devin if he would like to be a part of this group? I have thought of that. And um, the only way I know, in fact, I've had people ask me after sending this how powerful is that? How I mean, mm-hmm. excuse me while I I just I just want to bring them closer here, here. to us, you know. I know. Um, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do that um, unless somebody else would like to as well. Um, the only way I know to get hold of him is by Facebook, and I think mm-hmm. Toretta. Do we have Toretta on yet? Is she here yet? 
not yet. Um, yeah, I, I, that would be incredible. I, what I would love to do, and I've actually thought this through, and then, of course, you know, the, the idea drops like a hot potato because something else comes up. Mm. But I thought it would be amazing if I could get him on um, and do the first half of the program, uh, just interview him, mm-hmm. um, and then open it up to Q&A for you guys, you know, um, mm-hmm. because he is uh, extremely valuable. To yeah. us, so but yeah. Thanks. I'm thinking. I'm referring more to his loneliness. Yeah, I see. You know, I see. and yeah. having him being a part of a group that meets once a week. Yeah, yeah. You know that that's maybe yeah. he could find friends through through us. Yeah. Yeah, consistent that's a great friends. idea. Yeah. yeah, I think we're going to do that. Yeah, and if anybody else wants to, I mean, please, this is this is not uh, just me talking. You know, I wanna I wanna reach out to the guy. I really do. Um, this one hit me straight between the eyes. You know, you heard mm-hmm. my little monologue I'm sure at the it beginning. Did. Yeah. yeah, very powerful. Mm-hmm. And it's and you see, you know, I and for those of you, I heard a few people join um, as I was going through the reading, um, and I gave part of my own experience, um, and you heard it with Devin, and I know there are many others out there, and he says in the end too, but so many of us, and myself included, um, you feel in the beginning or going through this like an army of one, Mm -hmm. and that's what you are. You are. So lonely. But that, that lonely. And you can be standing in the middle of a crowd and you still feel all alone in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, he said something that struck me also, probably struck you as well, um, that, you know, spouses, your, you know, wives and husbands will leave the marriage, leave their, you know, because of this disease. And I've heard of that. I've, I've Yeah. Over time, I have, I don't know if any of you have or had similar experience, but um, there are, I, I, I'll take this one step further, and I really don't want to get into it if you be kind enough not to ask me a question, but um, I will say this, that as I was going through these stages and right through today, um, there are people in my family who never, as bad as it got for me, never acknowledged that I was sick. Okay. Abandoned me. Abandoned. They walked away. They walked yeah. away. And you know what? When I started getting better, and I know the odds of me having gotten better, you know, for the majority of people, you know, it's, it's kind of a low, lower percentage, but I did. Mm-hmm. They came, they, they wanted to come back. Yeah. And how did you, oh, no, I'm not sure. No, go, go ahead, ask, ask, ask. How, ask. how did it's, you it's feel right. about that? Were you angry with them? It was um, it was a, a bouquet of emotions. Mm. It was yeah. mostly there. There was there was some anger, yeah, mm-hmm. but it, the anger was overshadowed and overridden, and still is um, into what has become pity for them. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it wasn't that. it wasn't pity in the beginning. It was absolute. Spirit crushing devastation emotionally, mm-hmm. because that was part of the feeling alone in the world. So I I had that. Mm-hmm. And by the way, you can ask me questions. You know, I just that was just sort of an emotional knee jerk reaction, um, left over, but still very much alive. Mm-hmm. Um, that would that that occurred in the same time frame as when the doctors told me I was dying and I needed to go home and get my affairs in order and blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, there's just, <laughs> just, just a little bit, I'm being silly, but just a little bit of Irish running through these veins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, just a little, little bit. bit. Sure and Begora, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, give me one of them shamrocks, <laughs> will you? <laughs> Let me chew on another. <laughs> How about a four-leaf clover? <laughs> Hello, ancestors. So here comes the Irish, right? <laughs> and that Irish, she can rise up. <laughs> and she, <did. laughs> she, and she got very upset. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, who the bleep, 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 <laughs> the blanks. do you think you are telling me I'm going to die? You're not going to tell me who to die. The Lord above is the only one who's going to tell me when I'm going right. to die. Yep. 
<laughs> so you just the, stop talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need for it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, yep, dear. that's right. And then and that started it all. But um then here we are today, right? I mm-hmm. mean it led us here. So to answer your question, um, yeah, that part of me got really mad, but the loss of them, you know, um, and I'm not gonna, you know, to say who these people are, but very close close enough to like oh my bleep 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 you gotta be kidding me it's you this is what you're really made of because you know the one thing this whole thing has taught me is i mean if i've learned nothing else through this ms experience is that you will see the true colors of -hmm. people the true colors will come out at one point or another it may take umpteen zillion years but you'll see it you will you'll find out what people are made of and they may be people very close to you they may be distant strangers but two colors come out so when i read this article I thought, oh man and then the, the emails that are coming in off of this one email you know mm-hmm. um the reaction is the same it's the same that we're all having right now yeah. and i believe that too a point a very large point at some point in all of this we most of us have felt like an army of one which yeah. how do you feel about that Virginia get me off my soapbox um yeah I, I I've had that feeling being an army of one mm-hmm. yeah it's a terrible feeling when people abandon you they yeah. just abandon you, and you, and you can't figure out why because they, you thought that they were the people that love you the most. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's, and that that's you a, count on the most. Yeah, yeah, that you count on the most, and then they walk away, and you think, man, mm-hmm. was I wrong? Well, in, in my opinion, it's just like they're all scared. You know what day I was thinking that too. Okay. I was thinking well, that too. You're right. But what I think are these guys? I, are I think terrified. They just have that um, probably that feeling of fear because they don't know what's happening to you, mm-hmm. and so or just, they're too afraid of what uh, they think is going to happen to you. That's a and possibility. They don't want to see that. It's exactly. Too scary. Yeah. And it scares the heck out of them, so they turn their back on you, shouldn't you, mm-hmm. push you away or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yep. And yeah. I have a question for Sue Ellen. This yeah, might be a little too close to home, but... It's okay, honey. Whatever yeah. happened to your husband? Uh, <laughs> he didn't understand, sweetheart. Oh, mm. dear. So he left you? Well, it was mutual, but, yeah, he... um. Yeah. Um, yes, kind of yes, and, away. yes and no. Um, we mm. were um, actually a team in radio. Okay. Oh, really? And that is how oh. I came to Florida. We were offered, as a team, we were offered a position with a um, pretty doggone good radio station at the time. Mm-hmm. And that's when, you know, I don't know if it was the, the transition, the trip. Um, we came from up north, um, you know, and the radio station brought us down here and got us set up right. and everything. But I don't know if it was the physical, meaning like, like the climate change. I've wondered that. <clears throat> of course, we, you know, we've talked about that too. And um, I think that's one reason why I lean so strongly into you know how's the weather where you are (laughs) you know but um we were yeah we we were we were a team in radio and um it just it was not any one thing Mm -hmm. it was a basket of problems should we say but this was at the root of it this was Mm -hmm. at the very very root of it and um we had been um we got had gotten ourselves the, the the first house not the one i'm in now but um a two story house <laughs> with ms two story mm. uh, yeah, right? yeah. Right? yeah you all know that right yeah. Mm-hmm. oh yeah very that. difficult mm-hmm. have that too yeah. yeah 
yeah. So <laughs> it was, um, you know, and um, the changes that I was going through, and it's everything that we talk about. It's nothing different, but they became uh, undeniable, you know, you know. And mm. So that's basically what happened, sweetheart, and it's okay to ask me. It's, it is. It's okay. Um, okay. You know, doesn't feel any better talking about it these umpteen years later, but it doesn't for you guys either that have gone through it. And we have to talk. We have to talk about this stuff. It's a very okay. common thing now. Life altering. I'm, I'm sorry, what? What's that? I said divorce or separation is such a common thing now. It is, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, and, yeah I, I, but anyway, so that was the end of my radio career. Do I need that? I say more. Um, mm. and we were pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. Oh. But those were, those were the days. And so yeah. we pick ourselves up, we dust ourselves off, and we start all and over move again. On. But that move must on. have, well, in the beginning, it must have felt really good, you know, to, to be on such a high, <clears throat> to be doing so well. You mean back, back, back in the day? I, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, in your job. Oh, it must oh, have I felt it. great. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I lo- and that's one reason I can relate to Devin so much because he was a software engineer, isn't that right? I think he yeah, was a software yeah. And he loved it. So and he talks about that in this email, this article. Um, and, um, boy, I can really, yeah, to answer mm-hmm. your question, oh, yeah, I can relate because I loved yeah. it. I mean, I woke up mm-hmm. in the morning. I couldn't wait to get into the studio. Couldn't yeah. wait. Get, couldn't wait to get on the air. That, that is the ultimate in a job. Mm-hmm. You know, when you, you get up every day and you think, yeah, <laughs> I'm going yeah. to work today and I'm so happy. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's, that's the ultimate. Yeah, yeah. Not too many people get that. No. In no. their lives. No, yeah. and believe it or not, I did two hours uh, on air every single day. Wow. Five days mm-hmm. a week. Yeah, that was a lot. And there's a lot of research that goes in. I mean, it's, it's not all in front of the microphone. There's, uh, oh, man, I mean, you just, it's, it's a lot of work. But if you love what you're doing, um, there you go. I mean, a what? lot of research? I'm sorry? You said there was a lot of research? Research. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah? A lot that goes into what, depending on, you know, what, what you do. But you've, you've got to have, uh, and you've, you've heard me kid um, you know, when we're on air here, <laughs> don't slip with the tongue, but, you know, I'm the queen of sticky notes. Well, I am. Because, <laughs> yes, I am <laughs> and that too. goes back forever because, you, you know, you've got your notes in front of you, you know, all the yeah. time. Although with Heart Talk here, it's gotten, it's morphed into where I, I don't do any notes. I, I don't have a note in front of me. Mm. It's all off the top, which mm-hmm. I like so much better. But yeah. that's just, that's just, you know. That's just my style. But anyway, that, um, yeah, okay, I'm divulging to the world more than I ever have, So, but that's, that's it. And okay. I, you can see why I related to this one thing from Devin, and I could feel him. I could hear him holding back. I don't know if you could, yeah. some of you could, but yeah. he, he held a lot back. Yeah. So the guys... Uh, um, does anybody have an email address for him? No, like I said, the only way um, that I know to get hold of him would be on Facebook, mm. and that came from um, Toretta. Toretta, are you on yet? No. No. Nope. She emailed me earlier and saying she would get on when she could, but uh, she was helping neighbors with something. So anyway, that's um, but that's that's my life story, and yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe that'll give you a little more insight as to. Oops. Wait. Dog. Hold on a sec. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Chipmunk. No, 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 no. Sorry. We had um, <laughs> Chipmunk. The dog was about to disconnect the phone. <clears throat> oh. She was down scratching on her toy pillow. I was like, no. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, uh, maybe you you know understand a little better how I, you know, the passion that comes out, you know, the emotion that comes out when mm-hmm. we get on these forbidden topics. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the root of it right there. Mm-hmm. That's the root of it. Yeah. So, but it's true. You, uh, this thing, this monster, it will, it, it'll cut you up and spit you out if you allow it. Mm-hmm. But like I said, um, we have to learn 
uh, we have to be determined enough. And, and so many of you on the call are already there. You're already doing it where you say, uh-uh, no, no, this isn't the end. No, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't accept it. You yep. take your medicine, take your diagnosis, take your bleep bleep pills, <laughs> you know, because I'm going to yeah. do it this way. That's right. <laughs> And nobody's going to tell me any different. <laughs> That's right. And Virginia, I know you're that way. Day, I know you're that way. Heather, oh, I know exactly. you're that way. And many more that are on this call, you are not quitters. And it's like he says, nope. you're not, you know, you are not alone. And that is one thing that is so important to me personally for Heart Talk to deliver that message is that you are not alone. I don't That's care. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't care. You're not yeah. alone. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you know, this here call is, oh, wow, it's just kind of um, very insightful, and it kind of lets us see more into Sue Ellen, because she opened a little bit with all her past and so forth like that, and that's pretty neat that you were in radio shows and so forth Mm -hmm. back in the day. Thank you very much for offering that. That was really interesting oh, I, I really appreciate it really yeah. same here okay yeah. well that lets you know a little more about me and about yes it does my, my history yeah. yeah yeah yes thank you very much oh you're welcome and feel free to ask mm. ask anything you know um, I mean it I really do mm. Like I said, when, when okay. I said, don't ask me, that was sort of a, an emotional knee-jerk reaction. That I did. <laughs> you can yeah. understand why now, but it's, it's fine. It, it is. So don't, don't, don't hold back. You're oh, boy, tonight it. you're going to get a long list of questions. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, well, oh, wow. Yeah, I, can, I can relate. I really yeah. I can, I can relate. You know, and there are so many people... Um, who can't, who feel like an army of one, but they they never get past that, or mm-hmm. they never get through it, or, or it just, you know, they just literally die off. Um, and, I, you know, I really am, always have been, and this, you know, makes me feel even more that um, the human spirit, this is an opportunity, sort of, maybe that's not the right word, but an opportunity um, for the spirit to grow, uh, you know, and for us to exercise that determination that we're all given. You know, that's that's a God-given gift. Um, mm-hmm. We've all got it to one degree or another. And some people will, you know, throw down the gauntlet and say, all right, let's go. <clears throat> you know, okay. I'm going to cross my Rubicon, whether you like it or not. And you ain't coming with me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, I do have one more question for you, Sue Ellen. How many Mm -hmm. children have you had? I have uh, two children. I've had several miscarriages back in the day. Yeah. Um, Yep, um, because I wasn't good at carrying kids. um, So that was a pretty bad experience. I always lost them early. Um, But, yeah, but I have two beautiful children, a boy and a girl. My boy is Andy, and Mm -hmm. my daughter is Jennifer. And um, I have two incredible, incredible uh, little granddaughters. Oh, (laughs) Oh, there you go. So God is blessed. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so thank you. That's wonderful. See, I've had had a total of three pregnancies. The first one was a miscarriage, the second one was Gabriel, the third one was Hunter. Mm-hmm. And it's kind yeah, of interesting. Sure. They have ten years between the two of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know Gabriel's uh, always okay. saying, "Uh, uh, nine years." And I said, "We don't worry about the year or months and so <laughs> forth." Gabe, if the, the you were twenty oh six and Hunter was twenty twenty sixteen, so there's ten years between you two. So mm-hmm. don't give me I'll gap beat about you on it. that. I'll beat you on that one. My my children are. My uh, my oldest daughter is 34 years old now, and my baby daughter is 32, and then my son is 23, so it's 11 years between uh, ah. my youngest daughter and my son. Yeah. Well, and by the way, while I'm talking, while I'm talking, I want to tell you all, I start Botox on Friday. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, but that's no yeah, hard work. So I started. Yeah, I will. I will. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to well, find your keys first, though, Marion. 
I know because my son is <laughs> can't go anywhere with that. Oh, oh wow! My son just <laughs> calling. He's sick at work and throwing up, and they want him to leave, and he don't have a ride. And I was like, I can't find my keys because somebody, his uh, fiance's sister, dropped him off at work today because so, his car broke down. So, wow! I gotta find my keys. You mm-hmm. like, We're all gonna come over to your house and help you yeah, look for your keys. Will come, okay, yeah. saying. Okay, thank <laughs> Do they have yeah. Uber up there, Marion? They do, and so he called this morning, and for his job, uh, they said it was $42 or some change one way. He's like, wow. Oh, my God. One way? Gosh. You got to do Ouch. that five days a week? Come on now. So, oh, so my like, goodness. Hey, he got to pay to get his car That's fixed, too. So yeah, the he has to be out in his car. Like, no buses? Yeah. Uh, no, they don't have, I mean, they have buses around here, but they don't have buses around here. They have them, uh, and not really, no. They have some, Our but they're not. Is. Yeah, so okay. it's not It's not a good bus system around here at all. Oh, we mm-hmm. don't have no transportation services, but our patent turner, our feet, bicycles, or cars. If you don't have is, one is, of those. Is that you, Toretta? Uh, Yep, yes, ma'am. I'm okay, I'm having line. trouble hearing. Great. Oh, I'm glad you made it. Um, yes. All right. So, how do you feel, Toretta? I would love your input. Did you? Did you? Um, have you? Have you been on a while listening? Or I just um, got on. I just recently got okay. on when y'all were talking about the children and miscarriages. I okay. had two of them, and I have two children, ninety nine and two thousand. Almost twins. <laughs> You're going to want to go back and listen to the replay on this. I think it's okay. uh, pretty pretty interesting. Yeah. I will. I will. Mm-hmm. I was definitely, I was helping my neighbor out, so I apologize for my time. That's fine. No, I got I your email. my neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope you got mine sure back. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the whole thing, um, it's sort of an excel. This this MS, the way I've come to look at it, is sort of an accelerated life course. It's it's kind of a, a course, <clears throat> um, you know, a, a course on how to live your life. <laughs> you know, uh, I know I'm making a little light of it, but not really. Back to. Um, I guess it was Day or Virginia asked me, you know, about what we were talking about, you know, when all this came crashing down. And it all did at once. You know what they say when it rains, it pours. You know, how did you feel? You know, people abandoned me. Doctors are telling me I'm not going to live much longer. I mean, you know, did it get any worse? You know, what else? Yeah, we're out of milk in the fridge. I mean, how? how what else is wrong with the day, right? So, um, yeah, there was um, shock disbelief followed by the anger and so much that I'm hearing from Devin his email so much of the emails that I got back in response to this from Devin and I'm I'm kind of hearing you guys are relating and I kind of I'd like to ask you back what are you relating to because I I do believe and of course I'm being being silly and a little, just just a little facetious when I say a course in living, you know. Uh, but it's true, you know. This, well, it, you know, it's a very good way to look at it too. I mean, this is a yeah. course in life. It's it a is. Test it's you know what some, it is. They, I don't know. It's put what? up or shut up. That's the way I see it. Yeah. Put, <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. To right. Me, Do or me, die. Put up like, or shut up. Mm-hmm. To me, there I you feel go. like we are all examples of, yes, we have multiple sclerosis. That's what the doctors have told us. But is it's our <laughs> test. It's our test to see if we're going to make it. And so far, we're doing amazing. So that's the yes, way we I look are. at it. I don't look at it as a punishment any longer. I used to look at it as, oh, my God, why would you do this to me? Did I do something bad that I'm trying right. to recall what I did that would just, you know, have this put on me like this and I have to go through all this? But, no, it's a learning tool. It's a process. It's for testimony. It's, it's your testimony, exactly, that you can speak to others. How many of y'all actually go out on a day-to-day basis and you don't talk to somebody and they start pouring out their heart to you, and next thing you know, you're telling, well, I have multiple sclerosis, and they're like, oh, my God, my friend has it, or my sister, or, you know, and then you find out things of other people. That's why I feel like we were actually called upon, we're a group of people that get on this phone call, and there's others around the world that are called upon to go through some of the hardest tests 
and we are those chosen to go through this test because when you think about it, we are still living our day-to-day lives. We're still being able to walk. We're still being able to talk. And for those that cannot walk, they are still walking, whether you look at it with a device they're walking with, but you're still having movement in your body. Not everybody's thankful to say, I'm blessed to be able to do that. Think about the people with ALS. They, once they become immobile, they are immobile. So that's where the Ice Bucket Challenge came from. That's the way they are. You know, they're almost like frozen. But we don't have that. We don't have those circumstances or those situations. We can still talk and do the things we enjoy doing. We just can't do it in the way we want to do it, but we're still able to do it. Now, if anybody don't agree with me, speak up now because that's what I believe in. (laughs) Well, and okay, you know what just struck me in the head? It's like we are the chosen ones. I mean, you know, it's kind of like a uh, a uh, superhero squad or something. We are the chosen ones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we're, we feel very fortunate to be to be where we are right now today. Exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Praise mm-hmm. God for that. Mm-hmm. We are. Yeah. We it's are. like, well, my little hunter. He kind of looks at us. It's like we are the greatest people ever. But hey, we're his parents. Of course, we're the greatest people ever, according to him. Yeah. Well, we have the opportunity, like that word keeps popping up today, but we have the opportunity to basically do some kind of, I lo- use this word l- loosely, but <coughs> teaching or be an example. Um, mm-hmm. and I, right? Um, so having said that, you know, um, rewinding the clock for a minute as to what we were talking about not long ago on this call what about the people hold that thought but what about the people who did abandon us what about the people who did turn their backs you know i wouldn't want to be them um you know uh no i wouldn't i wouldn't want to be one of them i would not want to be in their shoes i uh, for for all the tea in china i really wouldn't because i can't i have grown god willing i have, have grown, grown to yep yeah, wonder what it's like to be them i really i really think about that a lot i i really do what is it like to be you to have the ability and the determination to actually turn your back on let's let's be honest on a disability um on okay. something that you consider to be less than you what's it like to be you you know and 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 i <clears throat> Pardon me, I can't put myself in their shoes. I, I really can't. Anybody want to help me out with that? Did you ever think about that? I do. Think I about have that actually all thought me, about tell me. that. Tell me. And I always think, I see, I used to be one of those kinds of people, but I was younger, way younger. And I always thought, eh, now well, they're handicapped. I don't want to talk to them. But now I think, I'm handicapped. So I was like, <laughs> huh. You know, I mean, wow. But look at no. the table. Yeah. I just yeah, yeah I just I just look around like thinking I used to not think that handicapped people were very good people. But well, yeah, all right. But well, you know now I think sometimes we're afraid of them too, you know. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Fear. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's just how like you felt. Yeah. Just like elderly people. Yeah. Just like elderly people. We don't wanna <laughs> we don't wanna take the time and help them out because they're so old, they move too slow, da 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 da. But yet, think about it. We're going to get to that point, or maybe we may not get to that point, or we have loved ones that get to that point. Are we going to turn our backs on them? Because that's basically what people have done to a lot of us MSers. They turn their back on us because of fear is why exactly. they turn their back on us. Okay, stop right there. Everybody hit the pause button. Okay. I keep hearing fear. I even fear. heard the word terror. What is the fear about? What are they afraid of? Tell me. I am not well, for I'm, sure. Oh, my God. What just happened here? Hold on. <laughs> oh, I don't oh, think it's so oh much my fear. Uh, Virginia, you all right? Fear. Yeah, I got some. I, <laughs> computer. Where did the music come from? Okay. Oh, computer. I thought, <laughs> oh, God, she didn't get electrocuted, did she? Did I electrocute my, my friend Virginia? <laughs> I don't even have <laughs> 
<laughs> I would never do that to you, by the way. <laughs> what the heck? Who was that? Oh, I know who that was singing. Oh, I love him. Anyway, uh, continue. Okay. Back to the, yeah, we, we interrupted Day. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Day. Sorry, I, I don't know you for I know. I know. All of a sudden, I had my computer oh, on. Yeah, I had my computer on. I thought I'll just look at some pictures, and then and then this guy started singing from nowhere, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness! I got anyway. What's going on? Speak, day. And me, I can't even remember what the heck I was thinking about. Oh, you were day, day, day. day. You, I, I asked yeah. you where did the what, we're talking about fear? People are afraid. I know. What are what are they afraid of? What are you know, they, what, I really and I, don't Fred, know. I want you to jump in on this too. What what okay. are people afraid of? <laughs> I don't get that. You know, I really don't know. It's a possibility they could be afraid of what may happen, being in denial. Fear of um, the unknown. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, I happen? think that's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think know. that... <laughs> what I'm sorry. That? Go ahead. I think that it could be a part of fear, but I don't think it's always fear. Sometimes they just don't want to be bothered because, you know... You got to have them to help you do this and help you to do that. So sometimes they just don't want to be bothered. That's what I think it is in some mm-hmm. cases. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not think, able to I, do different things. I've even heard that people think MS is contagious. Oh, good Lord. Yes, I have yeah. too. Have you? Looked at me. Same with Haiti. They, I've heard that before and, myself. Yes, they think it's contagious. They think you're going to die. You have a period of time to die and all that. I used to get all of that. When are you dying? How long did I give you? <laughs> oh. Give me a date and time. Yeah, right. Yeah. Have a nice day. Uh, can we help you? Yeah. But then, yeah. See ya. Uh-huh. But then when, they thought, when they thought that I was going to die, they started helping me more. People that, that didn't even associate with me at first just started coming out the woodworks to me, so they were kind of being helpful. It well, let me so ask you this. Let me, let me ask you guys this. Do you think um, that people like Tourette is just talking about people, you know, all of a sudden, oh, she's going to die. I got, is, is that guilt? Uh, do, do, yes. do they ha- are they capable of feeling yeah, I haven't done guilt? anything. Oh, no. i got to do something for her. Right? Is that guilt, Virginia? Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, I've heard like that phone happen calls. with my own like husband people before. Want to- that don't normally call you, all of a sudden they pop up out the woodworks calling you, how is your day? How are you doing? Is there anything I need from you? They start making you feel like you're helpless. And I tell them, look, I'm just like you. The only difference is I walk slower, I talk slower, but I'm not dying in six months. I'm going to live as long as God allows me to live. I am okay. I just have a disease that is affecting my central nervous system. And basically, it's just like I told y'all that a while back. It's like a cable wire. If you take the code off that cable wire, exactly. you're going to have malfunctions. And that's what's happening with my brain. It's malfunctioning and causing all different kind of reactions and circumstances to occur. Mm-hmm. Sure, sir. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What a conversation this has been. You know, I, know it. I really liked it. I really yeah. liked it. Well, yeah. I have to yeah. go back and uh, get that replay. So wow, we're, if, looks uh, like we're coming up to the end of the hour. Yeah, who who was talking about the replay? I didn't I didn't hear. Who was Toretta. That? I yeah. said I'll let you know if I receive the replay because I didn't yeah. receive your email this week. Yeah, de- definitely. Um, mm-hmm. And if you don't get it, because I know we've had trouble, and then you sent me that new or that different email of yours. If you do not get it, Toretta, because you are in the database, of course, um, let me know, and and I'll just send it separately to you. Okay. So I mean, I can do okay. that. I just you know put it in the in the database and send, let the system send it out. So if you don't get it, I'm not going to know about it. So you tell me, and then I'll go ahead and. Um, yeah, so you, you, Toretta, you're going to want very much to hear this, I think, because it's, uh, you know, we have uh, really covered some ground here, and um, okay. yeah. I, I, I think we should not leave it at this one call. I think we have unearthed something here that is um, really affects a lot of people. We tend to think, as I started off with my little monologue at the very beginning, that we tend to feel 
those of us who are determined to fight it, those of us who are determined to live through this, we do feel like we are an army of one. Many of us are an army of one. Many of us really are um, alone in the crowd or we feel alone in the mm-hmm. world. We may not be physically, we may be surrounded by all kinds of people, but we're still alone. And that's what Devin was talking about here. And I really, I really feel for the guy, you know, um, because there's so many of him. And he ends, by, he ends his article by saying, I think there's, you know, many of us out there just like this. You know, mm-hmm. paraphrasing, but that's, that's and what And if all the men invite them to the heart together. talk call. Yeah. Yeah. Invite yeah. him to the hard talk Exactly. Call. That's yeah. what I said. And yep. that way yes, we would love to have him on. One yeah. hour yeah. of non-loneliness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I mean, if, if there's anything that this has, has um, accomplished, if you will, <clears throat> is that we basically have put a rest to that kind of loneliness, I think. Mm-hmm. I really do, because we've grown into a, not just a community, but a real family. Mm-hmm. And, the people, the, yeah, and call the, I, him, Sue Ellen, and just say, or email him, say, we're looking for a real special kind of guy, because mm-hmm. he'd probably be the only <laughs> guy on the line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And, and, I uh, know we have guys it's listening. Compliments. <laughs> yeah, it, it, well, it is. We have guys listening. Hi, Guillermo. Well, have them, have them Hi, Guillermo. Speaker. Yeah, I know. See if you can get him as a guest speaker, maybe. Well, that's what I said. What I was yeah. thinking, you know, if we could do the first half of the uh, program, if I interviewed him, and then open yeah. up the second half of the uh, call to uh, Q and A for you guys. So, yeah, that all right, I'm, I'm on it. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll, and don't be, forget our brother yeah. Hillary. How often if that works out. Our, our, our what? I'm sorry? That would, be a good, that would be something that we may could t- start uh, implementing if it works out, if we can get certain guest speakers, if you can reach out to them, and mm-hmm. that way we can get the side of what they go through, just not by their writings, but by their actual voices and hearing what, you know. I would love to do oh, that, but like I said. That's a terrific idea. Yeah, that's a great idea, and don't think I haven't mm-hmm. thought about it. But, guys, let's go back to what I was telling you about my my distant past in radio, talk radio, by the way, <clears throat> and, uh, and straight talk. <laughs> that's what it was. But anyway, there is a tremendous amount of time and research that goes into that. I do not have that kind of time. I don't have the luxury right now in my life of that kind of time. If you want to do it, if anybody wants to pick up the gauntlet and do that, I'm all for it, you know, um, and just, you know, bring that information to me when you're done and, you know, I'll put the finishing touches on it and I will, you know, um, you know, vet the person or whatever. Um, But it's, it's an enormous enormous amount of research and time that goes into that. I just don't have it right now. Um, okay. And I'd love to do That's it now. With, yeah, with mm-hmm. Devin, I will, uh, the, the best of my ability. But um, if you guys want to reach out to him, too, I think it'd be great. More, more, the, okay. more the better, more the merrier. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, do you have his email address? No, uh, he's on Go Facebook. Online. I don't. Go online to Facebook, Devin Garlett. And he okay. has a page for MS, and he also has his regular page, and reach out to him that way. Good. Okay. It may take him a while to get back to you, but mm-hmm. that's what I did. I reached out to him uh, that way, but I haven't got a response back just yet. Okay. Yeah. Did you yeah. ask him anything or about coming to I don't the group? remember exactly what I said. I said, we, we read your articles. I do know, uh, and we have a heart talk call, I think is what I said. Mm-hmm. Um, How do you spell it? I'm last also name? on Facebook. I'm not always G-A-R-L-I-T, on Garlet. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. See if I can find them. Yeah, but see I if you can. I just want to let y'all know I'll be gone, so I will catch up with the replay as well. Okay, that sounds okay. good to write it. And let me know if you don't get it. Um, I should okay. um, be sending that out. Um, I'm gonna, I always work on it. You know, as soon as we finish the call, I take like a five-minute break, and then I come right back at it. Um, so you'll probably get it within about, I'm guessing, an hour and a half, roughly. Okay. Oh, that long? 
Oh, well, with the sometimes it takes a yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you. <laughs> I know. I know. By the time it takes it to get through the airwaves, you know, and yeah. that's a long way up to Canada. That's right. You know, uh, hey, these emails they gotta travel, man. You know. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, but I'm there almost done the border. Jeez. <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you oh really guys what an amazing really amazing call yeah <laughs> i know yeah, yeah you can tell this one and hit me like a brick. this one hit me like Oreo. a brick you got yeah, all the we're over the... out of your your host today didn't you yes you did <laughs> yep, yes you did, did. <laughs> you know things about me you know i haven't told my closest neighbor that <laughs> Unless he's, unless he's listening to the, to the call right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know it all. We know it all. Oh, yeah. Now we're all about to know it all. Right. Okay. Right, yeah. All right. Well, well listen, before all. we close out, because we're yeah, going to have we are to. Over, we are over the top we're of the hour. Over, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank so, you, Dave, for letting thank me know. Thank you yeah. very much, Sue Ellen. Oh, my pleasure. Why did you have to remind you, the wife not to tell him we were over the hour? <laughs> we are. We are. And we've got to move into the prayer portion because now and you, I, you understand why that prayer portion is even, I mean, you can understand even more why the prayer portion, for example, is even closer to me. You know, it's yeah. near and dear to my heart um, for all the reasons we've talked about today. So, yeah, That's it's extremely true. important, extremely. So before we leave um, the um, commentary portion of the call, anybody want to have, throw in their two cents um, real real quick? I have. The, I want to throw in my two cents, please. This is Sherry. I have Sherry. a cold, so I might not be oh. uh, uh, oh. understandable. Uh, but get anyway, when there, we were Sherry. talking about a uh, gentleman in our group, uh, didn't we forget Hillary? Oh, yeah, we've got Hillary. That's Hillary. right. Hi, Hillary. That's We're all right. waving. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Hillary. And I wanted Hi, to throw Hillary. in after last, excuse me, after last Tuesday, my husband and I went driving around. He needed permission from the farmers, um, owners of land. Anyway, he his turkey season started on Wednesday. So we went mm. all around and around and around, and we were coming home. It was about 6.30 at night. We hit a deer, <gasps> oh. and oh, we were okay. It was a little deer, a fawn, um, oh. doe, and last year's doe is how he said it. And oh. he is a pro, an absolute pro at seeing stuff like that. That deer came out of nowhere, mm-hmm. and wow! On the driver's side, took the headlight out, bent the hood. And, of course, we've got full insurance on it. And he took it where he was supposed to. We contacted the insurance the next day, the cop first that night, and then insurance the next day. And so we had to take it to get it um, appraised of the damages. They totaled it. Our oh, insurance wow. oh, my totaled word. it. Oh, my And goodness. Carl talked to one of his friends. Um, and Carl told him, he said, uh, uh-uh, uh, we can't total it. This can be fixed. My wife needs this, absolutely needs this. Mm-hmm. And then Carl went around and around with the insurance company on the phone. They wanted to total it. Oh my word. And oh, geez. so yesterday Carl <laughs> went to our local insurance guy, very, very sweet guy. And, um, then Carl went to where it's going to be fixed. I got to tell you, our van is going to be totally fixed. Oh, right. Um, next Monday. <clears throat> next Monday. Good. Wow. Good. My husband got it done. Good. Thank the goodness. By the All horse. right. Praise the Lord for that. Yay. Yay. I'm going to go with Larry, the cable guy. He got her done, right? Get, get her <laughs> done. done. That's right. Get her done. <laughs> That's right. Oh, all that's right. Like well, we just got her done. Yeah. Thankfully, yeah. you're all right. Did, did did it kill the deer? Did it kill the little fo- the instantly da- the... instantly killed it? Oh. Yeah, I, well, mm. good. There was no suffering. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Good. That's okay. good. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad you're okay and Carl's okay Thank you. and yeah, and that the deer didn't suffer. We always. Oh, you know, and by the way, that. Carl got permission to go turkey hunting. He got a great big turkey oh. the next day. 
and he's mm-hmm. in sec- second place in the contest up here at town at the Agri right. Center. All right. So wow. he did good. It's 23 Yay. pounds. Oh, boy. Ooh, wow. wow, that's, that's a big bird. Good. A good big bird. Guys. All right, all right, guys. Okay. We've got to we got to move on. Gotta go. okay. We are going to no go new into... no new names. Okay, yeah. No are are names. there any new names uh, to go on the prayer list this week? <clears throat> okay, nothing new. Okay, um, let me get that ready. All right, for those who um, do not know, maybe you're the first time uh, callers, we're calling in for the first time because um, I know we are getting more and more people on replay all the time. So I want to welcome you. Um, if I haven't welcomed you uh, at the beginning of the call, let you know how great it is to have you on board with us on Heart Talk. And uh, you know, thanks for your emails, everybody. I greatly appreciate that as well. But what we do is um, at the end of every call, every single uh, one of our wonderful Heart Talk calls um we have we move into the prayer portion that's what we call it and um what we do is we read a prayer and read the names on the prayer list now you may say well what's a prayer portion what's that well here's the deal you've heard the call you've heard what we talk about you can hear that i mean we get down to the nitty-gritty of whatever it is we're talking about and today was no exception in fact today might be one of the granddaddies of them all um and it's uh, something I think we all need to hear. And that's why we call it Heart Talk. And that's why we do it. But we couldn't do it, trust me, without a little divine intervention in the very beginning to put it together and to keep it going right up through today. Trust me when I say that. You're just going to take my word for it. So I, I not only believe I know that there's been divine intervention to put this together, to bring us all together. Not only just you guys that are live with me here right now, but those that are listening on the replay. And I, for one, am so glad. No, I am grateful that you're here. I'm glad, of course, but it goes a step beyond. I'm grateful that you're here. And as a little personal side note, thanks for letting me share some of my deepest, darkest secrets (laughs) today of my distant past. Anyway, it's now maybe the dots will connect a little better as to who Sue Ellen is and what makes her tick, you know. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Um, but anyway, um, that being said, we need to say thank you every single week. We need to say thank you to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has allowed us, allowed us to come together. He has maybe handpicked you to come and be part of this all of you your hearts are ready i know that that's obvious your minds and your hearts and your spirits because after all we are body mind and spirit all put together in a beautiful balance and that's what this is all about and that is what heart talk is all about and so with that we are going to have our prayer and read the names from the prayer list and in doing so in doing so, in our humble way, say thank you to our Father in heaven for allowing this to all be possible. Let me take a sip of juice. And we will now enter the prayer portion of our call. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your divine intervention into the lives of so many that need your help. We ask that you answer our fervent prayers to help those who are in need and afflicted with multiple sclerosis and other ailments and diseases that are interfering with their lives and in many cases, crippling their lives. And as we read these names aloud now, Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit move through these lines of communication that are connecting us all around the world and that the Holy Spirit will carry our voices together with our prayers into the heavens, and that you will hear our prayers and grant comfort to those who ask for your divine intervention in their lives, for them and for their families, and grant them healing, restore them to good health, and that you will cover them with your blessings and divine presence and protection. And we thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
And I will now read the names on the prayer list. Donnell, Linda, Sandra, Erica, Shemang, Dyke in Texas, Carlos in Canada, Janet Carroll and family, Tish and Luke Roskams in the UK, Mary Ferris, Jeremy Mann, Julie Perkins, Rayshon Jefferson, Damon Jones, Scotty Williams, Barbara Cleary in the UK, Linda Hawley, Sylvia, Greg Evenson and family, Arthur Marsalis, <coughs> Veronica Lewis, Tanya Thompson, Kathy Piedrick, Mark, Francine Mancari, Tamala Lewis and family, Michelle, Joe in the UK, Carol in Iowa, Edie in Missouri, Alberta in Kansas, Will and Konacek, Sandra Moen in Canada, Susan, Russ Dizdar and family, Donna and Nathan Leal, Kathleen in Boston, Frankie, Melissa and Destiny in Boston, Tracy Whiting, Clint and Cliff in Kansas, Phyllis in Kansas, Jennifer in the UK, Linda Jean, Sherry Gudgeon, Sabrina Sutton, Tracy Thacker, Melanie Monteith, Edie Neal, Sybil Wyndham, Manfred Pauli in Venezuela, Donna and son Andrew, Mubin in Cape Town, South Africa, Rona, Noor, Rami, Ferris, Muhammad, Jill Han, Travis and Ellen Thacker, John, Tommy and family, Dennis Walker, Faye, Maria in South Africa, Jennifer, Charlotte Matrisic, Maria in Nevada, Louise in Alabama, Patty in Alabama, Sybil Wyndham, Gloria Contessa, Mrs. Disney, Ladios, Dr. Paul Hegstrom, Lorraine, Irene, Lydia, Mike Newcomb, Beverly Raza, <coughs> Jason in Florida, Charlene Kelly, Daniel in Toronto, Faniel and Frankie, Robert, Stacy, Judy, Sarah, Ron and Marge, Constance Wadlington, Toretta, Glenda from Kansas, Larry Nichols, Melanie, Floyd, Amy and Eric Olson, Trudy, Gladys, Gerald Taylor, Diamond, Gregory, Irma, Travis John, Ertis, Demarcus, Anne, Richard Bresen, Helen, Pearl, Irma, Grace, Rebecca, Linda and Joe in the UK, Dan and Jason Junker, Dion in Michigan, Joshua and Johnny, Kalila, Ara Lee, the Marsh family, Julie Mullins, the Grant Anderson family, Chad Cowan, Randy Guerra, Barry Walcott, Tina and CJ, Ray, Mackenzie, Deborah, Sally, Joe and family, Gina, Mary in Alaska, Veronica Thomas, Karen in Seattle, Michael Freeman, Megan, Trudy, Jeremiah Mask, Guanadi in Russia, Jeff Olson, Kelly in Texas, Jennifer in Kansas, Geneva Norris, Latasha Coleman, Seth Thomas, Jim Thomas and family, Tanisha Washington, Cindy, Guillermo, Eula Cooper, Robert Alexander, Leo Torres, Chris Elias, Jeff London and family, Jared and John Chambers and family, Eddie Tiny, Leslie Cavazos, Ryan Cadillo, Aaron Marsh, Jimmy in the UK, <clears throat> Valerie and Hillary Perry, Blanche Collins, Flick Mays, Michael Kuhlman, Pope family, the Baldonado family, Mary Jo in Fargo, Danielle Duran, Dr. Marty Sanders, the Hargrave crew, Lena Davis family, Sharon in London, Billy Medlock, Lola Striggles, Rondella Canita, Dave McCartney and family, Nicole, Shay Standifer and family, Billy Coleman, Rita Nixon, James Grace, Alton Johnson, the Johnson family, Tracy and Alice Daniels, the Elias family, Arlen, Kathy and Al Matthews, Deborah Yars de Lorenzo, Chadrick Watson, Kevin Giles, Eric, the Collins family, 
the Johnson family, Trevia Powell Clark and family, Ray LaBelle, Tony Delcy, Edward McFarland, Seth, Malaya Mar- Marnie Horton Fisher, Abe Martinez, Roscoe, Hattie Battle, Alberta and Chuck, Isabel, Enoch Bryant, Sister Wanda Burke, Anthony Canita, Trinity Johnson, Curtis Warren, Susan Trotter, Rhonda Pryor, Wanda Burke, James Washington, Enoch Bryant's family, Aretha McKinney, Lee Pittman, Blessed Hartiban, Andre Giles, Penny, Bonnie, Loretta, Ray Charles, Wayne Jones Jr., Kadisha Cooper, Becky and family, Ashia and Kanisha Morrison, Jeff Olson family, Sybil Morrison family, Terlina Hope, the Gafford family, Emily Aguilar and family, Shaladra Kelly, Ann Downs, Irvin Gudgeon, Latosha Coleman, Jackie Clark, Don Orth, Jason Kirkaby, Denise Duby, Miss Stapleton, the Moody family. And Father, these are the names of the children who perished in that apartment building fire in Chicago not long ago. Adrian Hernandez, age 14. Ariel Garcia, age 5. Xavier Contreras, age 11. Nathan Contreras, age 11. Cesar Contreras, age 14. Maya Almarez, age 3 months. Loni Aiea, age 3. Grelani Aiea, age 5. Giovanni Aiea, age 10. And Victor Mendoza, age 16. Ricky, La Rosa, Paula, Netta, the Flores family, Rose Cummins, Val Hayward, May family, Zafonso Davis, Michelle, Mac, Taylor, Ray, Allen, Willie Alton, Asila Freeman, Johnny Blair Jr., Alicia, the Berguano family, the Lake of Stamford, Kashari Warren, Christopher Anders, May Thomas, Callie Parson, Lisa Abbey, Joe Moore Sr., Joshua Judkin, Rachel, Dylan, Wanda, Gordon, Gordon Biffle, Demarion Coleman, Mary Cox, Beth, Megan, Zachary, Stephanie Giles, Tevin Giles, Arlene Matthews Family, Crawford Family, Veronica Enriquez, Dante, Marche, Emerson, Pryor, Leon, Nikki, Roy Collins, Steve Lefevre, the Moody Family, the Sanders Family, Hezekiah, Mette Lisa Eggenhagen, Jamie Kloss Family, Shaney, Susie Walker, Jackie McDonald, Leticia, Joan Rufe, Shawnee, Marie, Michael, Leticia, Elizabeth, Judy Thomas, Belinda Prather, the Bailiff Family, Buford Family, Ray Charles Davis, Arletha Davis, Aretha McKinney, Alberto Martinez, Sheila D. Lauder, Marion, the Parker Family, Byron, Levi Jester and Family, Hearn Family, Jimmy Sims, Roberta Weirman, Johnny Ramirez Jr., Laura Stiles Family, Terry Maybon, Roman Nept, Hal Turner, and Family. And I will leave you with this. Lord, help me to remember that nothing is going to happen to me today that you and I can't handle. Amen. 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 And guys, I want to say thank you. What an amazing, amazing heart talk call this has been. I'm sure I know. We never want to quit talking. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. What a great But unfortunately, we have to let each other go so we can get ready for next week's go. Exactly right. Exactly <laughs> right. And so I can get That's the replay out, right? 
<laughs> yeah, that too. Yes, we've got to have that replay. In other words, we got to zip it so you yeah, can take care of the replay. <laughs> and, yep, that's very important. And mm-hmm. so i got to send you back out in the world now. I don't want to, but I must. The time has come. Yes, it has. But as I do, let me remind you, all of you, whether you're here live with me right now or listening on the replay, that you are in my thoughts and my prayers every single day, and I love you very much, and none of that will ever change, ever. Know that. That is and so, so wonderful. Yeah. So with that, we got to say goodbye for now, but not for long. Next Tuesday will be here and upon us before you know it. And we'll be mm-hmm. right back here, same time and same station, as they say. <laughs> and uh, we'll pick up where we left off. What do you say? With another Sounds great good. visit gathering here together as we gather around the old kitchen table. Pushing those chairs back now. We've got to get up and go. But we'll be back sitting around that kitchen table once again with another wonderful, God willing, heart talk call. So in the meantime, you go have yourself a wonderful day, a wonderful week ahead, and stay safe out there. I love you all. Exactly. And I'll see you Love you too, Sue Ellen. Love you. Thank you. Love you all. Love you. See you. Blessings to all. I'll talk to you all later. Thank you, Dave. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a blessed day, everyone. Blessed day for everybody.